Hello and thank you for joining us. Today we are going to discuss how we actually analyze the photos that we have taken of the corals in our holding tanks. So every month we want to measure and, and assess the health of all the corals so that we can report to the DEP and how they're doing, but it also helps us to track on what we're doing here in the aquariums and ensure that there's no issues or any problems with the corals that we have in our care. And so in the last videos, you learned how to actually take the photos and then how to organize them and rename them for this project. And then today we're going to be using a program called ImageJ to actually measure the area of each corals and so we can compare it to the previous months. So the first thing that you'll need to do is download the ImageJ program. And what we're going to do is search Google for ImageJ and we want the Fiji edition. The Fiji edition is a newer version of ImageJ which has more features. So you want to find the one that is downloadable from imagej.net and then you can download it for your PC or Mac computer depending on what you're using. Once you download it, it'll just come as a zip file. So all you have to do is extract it and then you're ready to use it. I've already extracted mine so I'll show you that here. So once you've extracted the file, You'll open it and you'll see all these folders here and then you'll see the application image J. So go ahead and double click that. Once the app opens, all you get is this small toolbar here. And this will be what allows us to, to navigate through and do everything we need to do within image J. However, the first thing you'll want to do is go over to help here and then go down to update. And update your your version so that you have all the the most current plugins and all that to ensure that you get the best functionality. Once you're updated, then we're ready to actually begin. So this is going to consist of four steps. We're going to open the photograph, we're going to measure a known distance, and then to set the scale. Third, we're going to outline the living coral tissue and measure it. And then fourth, we're going to enter that data into our spreadsheet. So starting with number one here, we're going to go ahead and open a photo file. So I have all mine in one folder. If you're using them from the Google Drive, you may have to download the ones that you're going to be working with. So we can choose a photo here. So this is a Fabia Fragum, number 21. And the first thing that, now that I have the photo, the first thing I want to do to it, the second step, was to set the scale. So I'm going to zoom in on one of these two scale bars. I generally just pick whatever one is more clear, but it doesn't really matter. Both of them are a known distance. So we zoom in, and then you're going to use this line tool here, the straight line. And we're going to make a line from two known points. So when you do this, try to do the longest longest measurement that you can to reduce our error. So if you did just one centimeter but it was slightly off, that's going to be percentage-wise a lot more error than if you did five centimeters and were a little bit off. So I'm going to pull it one, two, three, four centimeters. And get it perfectly in the center of both lines and release. Then I'm going to measure this straight line. So I'm going to push Control M. What this does is it measures that line in pixels. So I get a length here, that right here that says 3.6. So this means that I had a scale set already, but obviously that is not correct. So I'm going to go up here to analyze, go down to set scale, and I'm going to set my known distance as 4. Now, if you want, you can put in centimeters here. However, it doesn't really matter because we're transferring this data manually and so that whatever you put here won't actually transfer anywhere. So to save yourself some time, don't bother changing that unit. If you're doing all photographs that are the same set, meaning that you set up your table and your camera and you're doing the corals one by one photographing them without moving the camera or the table, then you can click global here and that'll apply the same scale to all the photographs in that set. However, just be careful to keep an eye 
on maybe the background and the way the table is orientated to know that you may need to change that scale when you enter a new set of pictures or if the camera got moved or anything like that. And we'll talk later about how you can check your scale to make sure that you're still on. All right, so we've got four centimeters here. Go ahead and click OK. Now the next thing we're gonna do is hold down Control and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. And then we're gonna zoom back in on our Fabia Fragum here. Now to outline this coral, we're gonna use this polygon selection tool here. With how this tool works is it allows us to add anchor points to create a polygon. So we're gonna click our first point and when move, click again right on the edge of the coral. And we're just gonna outline this coral, clicking very often. We want to maintain right in line with the actual geometry of the coral. We don't want it to estimate or just draw a circle around it. We want this to be as accurate as possible. So include all the living coral tissue as you go around. And sometimes it's a bit hard to tell if it's a shady area or a coral, so do your best um, and, and zoom in if you have to. So over here, we wouldn't want to take any of this stuff on the right side here because this is not living coral tissue, that's dead skeleton. So we're gonna avoid that and we're gonna continue until we get back around to our beginning. Once we've gotten back here to the larger anchor point, you can click directly on it and that will close the polygon. So now we've got a complete polygon here and we can go Control M to measure it. And what we'll get is in this area here that says area, we get 10.942 and that will be in centimeters. So the fourth step is that we take that number and we put it into our Google sheet. So we would enter that number into the area column of the Google sheet for that particular month. Okay, so four easy steps. Open the photograph, set the scale, trace the living tissue, measure and transfer the data to the data sheet. So that is, seems very easy and straightforward. However, when you're actually doing this, you're gonna run into many different issues um, and unique circumstances that you'll need to know how to deal with. So for the rest of the video, we are gonna go through some specific examples about dealing with strange circumstances, how to deal with corals with large mortality zones, how to deal with bleached corals, and other things like that. For one of the first things you'll have to know how to do is to deal with corals that have large zones of mortality. This could be due to predation or disease or, or some type of pathogen that's invaded the coral and it's since healed up, but it's left a large dead area. In these cases, you won't be able to create a simple polygon. This also works for corals where there are in multiple pieces on the tile. So I will find one of those here. So in this coral, what we see is that it suffered extensive mortality. So we have two pieces of this colony, and this one has suffered a lot of mortality, and this one also has some areas where there's no living tissue and only dead skeleton. So this becomes a bit harder than to actually outline the area. So the first thing that we need to do, as usual, is to set our scale. So I'm going to zoom in on the scale bar, once again, I'm going to mark this area. Okay, now I set our scale, we'll zoom out. What we'll have to do is outline each one of these segments one by one. So the easiest way i found to do this is to zoom in on it. So you got it really close up there. You can see where the living and dead tissue are. Grab your polygon tool and start somewhere to outline the living tissue. Okay, 
So now we've outlined that section of living tissue, but we need to outline the other sections without losing this section that we've done. So the first thing, if you hold down the space bar at any time, it'll allow you to pan or to move the photograph. So if I hold down the space bar, I can move the photograph down to let me see some other coral tissue. Now when I want to create a new polygon, I'm going to hold down the shift button. So I hold down shift, I click my first polygon, anchor point, and then I can release the shift key and resume inserting my anchor points all the way around. Now, if I wanted to move over here to see this area, again, I would hold the space bar, drag it, and then hold shift and begin clicking to create a new polygon. And this, if you use shift, it'll add to your selection. You can also remove from your selection. So let's go back over here and you'll see that I included two areas of mortality here. So I want to remove those areas from my final selection. So in this time, instead of holding shift to begin creating a polygon, I'm going to hold down the alt key. So I hold down alt and I click and it creates the start of a new polygon again. And I can draw one polygon and then I'm going to hold down alt again and click and we can see that here. So when, when ImageJ actually comes to, once I've finished outlining this coral and removing those dead areas, ImageJ will only calculate the area of the polygons in here. And we can test that actually by removing all the area that we've deleted. So if you could tell it went black there, but those areas are not black. So this technique using shift to add to your selection and alt to subtract from it is how you're going to handle corals where there are large areas of mortality. It's also how you can handle corals that have been fragmented and are growing back together. So remember to use the shift key to add and the alt key to subtract from your selection and to use that space bar to allow you to move the photo around. Another time that you will work with the space bar is when you're doing quite large corals. So remember that we want to get the exact perimeter of this coral so we can take an accurate estimate of its area. <clears throat> so because this coral is so large, what I'm going to do to create my polygon is to zoom in on it. So I hold control and zoom in. And then as I create my polygon, I'm going to follow the exact border of this coral. So once I start getting to the edge of my screen here, I don't have to zoom out or anything. All I have to do is hold down the space key, pull the photo down, release the space key, and then continue clicking to create my polygon. So the space key will also help you to work on some of these larger corals, such as the sea gnats. So another type of coral that can be quite tricky are the corals that have bleaching. They might be entirely bleached like this one or partially bleached like some others. And with these ones, what we're going to do is to treat that bleached tissue just like we would the dark brown tissue or the, the tissue that has uxanthellae. So like the healthy corals, we only want to include the living tissue inside of our measurements. So on this coral, we can see that all this bleached coral is still actually alive. When we move out from that, then we start to see that we've got this skeleton that's covered over in filamentous algae. We definitely don't want to include that. And we also have this kind of slimy looking skeleton that is more recently killed. So we're going to avoid that as well. So with this coral, we would treat it just like the healthy corals and just outline any of the living tissue. The reason for this is that with any luck, next month we'll be dealing with this coral and it will have regained its tissue color, its zooxanthellae, and will be growing again. So with bleached corals, just treat them the same as healthy corals 
and be sure to only outline the living coral tissue and not the dead areas. Okay, and the last point was how do we check the scale? So as we're going through all these fabia fragments, they were all on the same stand. We can tell that by the background. I know that I had the camera on a tripod, so it wasn't moving. So I could just rush through these all very quickly without setting the scale. However, occasionally what I want you to do is just check. So to check that we are still on the same scale, what we're gonna do is zoom into our scale bar and then we're just going to simply measure it. So I'm gonna come here to 15 and try to get it quite accurate. And I'm gonna come down to 12. So when I push Control M, I should be at three centimeters. So Control M and it's 2.966. So that is fairly close, but since I'm already here and I've already drawn a new measurement line, I'll go ahead and set that new scale. If you are within a thousandth of a centimeter, then you're pretty much okay. But if it's off by about a tenth of a centimeter, or this one is off by about four hundredths of a centimeter, then let's go ahead and just update it just for accuracy's sake. So I'll go ahead and change this one to three. Even though it wasn't that far off, it's a good idea to do. Hit okay, and then I'm ready to start measuring again and continuing on. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand how we're going to be measuring the corals that we are taking care of as part of the Florida Coral Rescue Project. The Reef Institute wants to extend our gratitude to you for taking on this endeavor. We know it's a lot of work each month, but it is very important that we're able to get this data collected and to keep track of the health and development of these corals that we're taking care of. So thank you again.